Hi everybody, this presentation will cover chemical reactions. So what is a chemical reaction? Chemical reactions take place when existing chemical bonds are broken and then new chemical bonds will be formed. It's important to note that there's energy associated with chemical bonds, so when you break old bonds and have new bonds being formed, it means that there will be a change in energy. This results in some reactions absorbing energy and other reactions giving off energy. There are a number of important symbols that you will use in order to write chemical equations or chemical reactions. We use the plus sign to indicate a difference between products or reactants. Uh, the arrow here means yields or produces. It's used to separate products from reactants in the equation. Uh, this is a special type of arrow that's used for reversible reactions, reactions which can uh, form products and then the products could actually react again to reform the original reactants. Uh, when we write S like this in parentheses uh, with a reactant or product it means that we have a chemical substance in the solid state. L is for a reactant or product in the liquid state. AQ means that we have a reactant or product dissolved in water. G is for gas. There are also some symbols that we will write above a yields arrow. So again when we have a yields arrow separating reactants from products if we write this symbol called a delta above the arrow it means that there's heat that is driving the chemical reaction process we can actually also write the word heat instead of using the symbol delta uh, other things that will be used will be either the symbol for an element or the um, formula for a compound which are serving as catalysts which help to drive a chemical reaction process Let's review the difference between reactants and products in a chemical change process. Reactants are the chemical substances present before the chemical reaction takes place, whereas products are the chemical substances which are being produced after the change. Um, and then let's remember back to our third experiment in class when we looked at chemical and physical changes. Please remember that signs of chemical change include um, the following types of things, bubble formation, temperature change, uh, production of light, formation of a gas, uh, also the formation of a precipitate or a solid. Please note that not all of these signs have to be present in a reaction, uh, but very often we will see one or sometimes even um, many examples of these indicators that a chemical change has in fact occurred. All chemistry students should be able to comfortably either describe a chemical reaction process using a word equation, for example, hydrogen reacts with oxygen to produce water, um, and transfer that then to write a symbol equation, H2 uh, in the gaseous state reacting with oxygen in the gaseous state, O2, to produce H2O, which is water. Um, this would be produced in the gas state as well. And uh, please remember that reactants are the things that we have before the chemical change process. That would be hydrogen and oxygen. Product or products are the things produced after the chemical change. In this case, there would only be one product, and it is water. A very important learning objective is that all students will learn how to balance equations. Some keys to balancing equations are that we want to compare the kinds and amounts of atoms of reactants and products. For this particular reaction, again, hydrogen H2 plus oxygen O2 produces water, H2O. Please note that there are two oxygens before the reaction process, right here, and there is only one after just the one oxygen in H2O. Uh, so we will need to write coefficients perhaps here, here, or here in order to help us to balance this equation. Uh, so why don't you pause this playback and try to balance this equation on your own before revealing the solution on the next slide. Here's a look at the solution for balancing the equation of hydrogen reacting with oxygen gas to produce water. We can see that we've written a coefficient 2 right here in front of H2O, the formula for water. This means that we will now have two oxygens to balance the two oxygens on the reactant side from O2. Uh, the coefficient 2 multiplies the two hydrogens in water to give us four hydrogen atoms. So this means that we'll also need a coefficient 2 in front of the H2 um, so that we balance the number of hydrogens on both the reactant side, there are four, and the product side, there are also four atoms of hydrogen. Please note that these values, 2, 
one, which we don't need to write, and two are coefficients. And this equation could occur in other ratios uh, if we're multiplying the reactants and products by any value. So we could have uh, 4 to 4, or we could have 20, 10, and 20. And we could keep adding examples to this, but I'll stop. It's important to balance reactions in order to follow the law conservation of mass or conservation of matter, which basically states that the amount of matter will not change when a chemical reaction is taking place. This means a number of different things. It means that the mass of reactants will need to be equal to the mass of the products which are present after a chemical change process. Or we can also think about this at the particle level, that the number of atoms of reactants before the chemical change process will need to equal the number of atoms of products uh, after the chemical change has occurred. This slide looks at a number of examples of different types of chemical reactions that you will be learning about. The first example, these are generic forms, is an example of a decomposition reaction where, in this case, a compound indicated by AB breaks apart to form two different substances, substance A and substance B. So we're breaking something apart. This is decomposition. Uh, alternately, here we see an example of a synthesis reaction. Uh, here we have substance A and substance B joining together to form a compound uh, indicated by AB. Here, SR is short for single replacement reaction. We can see here that AB would indicate an ionic compound. C would indicate a metallic element. Uh, and after the reaction has occurred, we see that the anion B is now joined with element C. A is now by itself. Uh, so we call this a single replacement reaction. Uh, we also have double replacement reactions where we have an ionic compound AB uh, and a second ionic compound CD. After the change process or after the reaction occurs, we see a new ionic compound, uh, positive ion A with negative ion D, and we have a cation C joined with an anion B. Uh, please note that cations, positive ions, are always written first, and anions, negative ions, are always going to be written second. Uh, our last type of reaction type is a combustion reaction where we have uh, some chemical substance reacting with oxygen. Please note that oxygen must be a reactant in combustion processes. This slide includes a number of examples of different reactions. We see a synthesis or S reaction where sodium reacts with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Please note in ionic compounds we do need to make sure that the compound is electrically neutral because sodium is plus one and oxide ions are minus two. We need a Na2O formula for this compound. Decomposition, water breaks apart to form hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The single replacement reaction shown here, we have lithium uh, reacting with zinc nitrate. Uh, remember that zinc has a positive two charge. This will form lithium nitrate plus zinc metal. A double replacement reaction example, we have sodium cyanide reacting with hydrogen sulfate or also called sulfuric acid to form hydrogen cyanide and sodium sulfate. Two different examples of combustion reactions follow here. We have magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Please note that this could also be classified as a synthesis reaction. Uh, the final example is methanol, CH3OH, combusting by reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. I would encourage all students to try to balance each of these equations. We will be going over solutions in our next class period. This slide gives additional information about double replacement reactions. For double replacement reactions or double displacement reactions to occur, one of the following things must happen. Uh, we need to either have a precipitate formation occur. Here we see that sodium sulfide reacts with cadmium nitrate to form cadmium sulfide and sodium nitrate. Uh, this substance right here is not going to be water soluble, so this would be the identity of the precipitate which forms. You'd be able to look this up using a solubility chart which we'll be using for an upcoming experiment. Uh, now, alternately we could have the formation of a gas. This reaction involves uh, a compound dissolved in water, sodium cyanide, 
uh, and we have hydrogen sulfate or sulfuric acid, again, uh, substance dissolved, compound dissolved in water. Uh, these will react to form hydrogen cyanide. Uh, this would be a gaseous material, and uh, still dissolved in water would be the other product, sodium sulfate. Uh, the third possibility for double replacement reactions is that an acid and base will react to form water, uh, plus they will also form a salt. Here we have hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride uh, dissolved in water, and uh, that's an acid. We, here we have sodium hydroxide, which is a base dissolved in water. Uh, they will react in a double replacement reaction to form sodium chloride, a salt, and HOH, hydrogen hydroxide, which is also water. Again, this is a, an example of a double replacement reaction of an acid and a base to form salt and water. Let's look at some rules for single replacement reactions. We'll use the activity series for single replacement reactions. Uh, on the activity series, the elements from lithium through sodium will displace hydrogen from water um, and acids. So we can see that lithium will react with water to form lithium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So this is what we mean when we say it will displace hydrogen from the water. Um, Anything which is below sodium, if it's placed into water, for example, aluminum, there will be no reaction. Uh, now, for the elements which are lower on the activity series, magnesium through lead, these are elements which will displace hydrogen only from acids. Uh, so, for example, if we have aluminum, we put it into water, nothing will happen. Uh, but if we put it into acid, it will react. Uh, the same goes for magnesium. Put it in water, nothing will occur. If you combine that with a an acid, uh, for example, hydrochloric acid here, we will form a compound, magnesium chloride, which dissolves in uh, the remaining water that the hydrogen chloride was dissolved in, and we'll get the formation of a gas. Uh, so the activity series goes from high to low. So we can see that lithium, potassium, calcium, these are metals which have very high activity. Um, silver and mercury, copper, these are metals which have very low uh, activity. Um, to use the activity series, we can see here lithium plus sodium hydroxide will produce a reaction because lithium here is higher on the activity series than sodium is. Uh, whereas the second example, calcium nitrate plus aluminum, uh, this will actually not produce a reaction because calcium uh, here is higher on the activity series than aluminum is, so the nitrate would prefer to stay with the calcium rather than transferring over and being paired with the aluminum. Here are some examples of combustion reactions. We have two examples here. When an element or compound reacts with oxygen, uh, we get a very rapid reaction in some cases. Uh, for example, magnesium will react with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. You saw an example of this the first day of the chemical reaction unit. Uh, another example of a combustion reaction would be when we have an organic compound which has only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, the combustion of these types of substances, for example methanol, uh, reacting with oxygen will produce carbon dioxide and water. We will discuss how to write net ionic reactions for precipitation reactions in class. We'll go over the example of the reaction of copper nitrate plus ammonium phosphate, uh, which is a precipitation reaction. Uh, the steps involved for writing net ionic equations are that we will write all water-soluble ionic compounds as individual ions. For example, we will write Na plus Aq plus Cl minus Aq as opposed to writing NaCl aqueous. Uh, we will cross out any ions that are spectator ions, uh, which are in the aqueous state, both on the product side and the reactant side. Uh, this means that they do not participate in the formation of the precipitate. Uh, the final step will be to balance the remaining atoms uh, and ions so that the number of ions will, uh, and also the number of charges, will balance with each other. Let's balance an equation. Let's first look at the separation of water. I'm going to set this initially so that we have one uh, of each of the different compounds. Uh, now we can see that the numbers are out of balance at this point. So I can see that I have two oxygens over here, only one here, so let's raise the number. Uh, we're now balancing the number of oxygens, and I can see now that I need to raise the number of hydrogens right here, and I now have a balanced equation. Let's try the example of making ammonia. I'll set each reactant product at one. We can see now that the hydrogen numbers are imbalanced. Let's try to find the common multiple of three and two. So let's multiply here and here, and we can see that we now have a balanced equation. Let's burn some methane. Ready? 
set, boom, and done. Yay.